Even celebrities have hobbies. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrities who are huge music nerds. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the musical tastes of those who entertain us in other mediums. Although some might actively participate in a band, it is not what they are commonly known for. Number 10. Edgar Wright Putting together one hell of an impressive soundtrack for his film Baby Driver, no one can say that this English director does not know his music. Ever since his work on the cult classic sitcom Spaced, Edgar Wright has found new and hilarious ways to seamlessly incorporate songs to add personality to his projects. I just like, got like, I mean, a bit like Rain Man just got endless, endless playlists of like different songs for different scenes. Different chases. <laughs> yeah. Demonstrating an eclectic taste, ranging from 90s pop anthems such as the Cardigans Love Fool to the greatest cover ever recorded in Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> What's he doing? Just like bass. Or freeze. Fun fact. In the early 2000s, Wright directed a handful of music videos, with one sharing similarities to Baby Driver. Number 9. Dave Chappelle This entry should come as no surprise. After all, his first ever movie role was in a musical comedy. <laughs> the stand-up comedian has frequently appeared at New York's legendary Radio City Music Hall. Besides his off-brand humor, the Radio City events often include a vast number of musical guests from Kendrick Labar and Chance the Rapper to Lauryn Hill and Childish Gambino. Not convinced yet? Okay, how about the time Dave Chappelle accidentally landed on the cover of a Prince single? Checkmate indeed. What am I gonna do, sue him for using a picture of me dressed up like it was impossible? <laughs> it's, that, it's that's genius! That's checkmate right there. That's checkmate. Number eight, Finn Wolfhard. When I had you to myself, I didn't want you around. As of 2018, Finn has accomplished more in two years than most successful people manage in a lifetime. If anyone asks where I am, I've left the country. Reaching prominence after being cast as Mike Wheeler in Netflix's Ode to the 1980s, Stranger Things, the Canadian actor spent his time in between seasons starring in music videos, releasing kick-ass acoustic covers, and demonstrating his love for Weezer's Buddy Holly. Recently, Finn made his behind-the-scenes debut by co-directing a music video for Spend Time Palace's Sonora. Number 7. Jack Black Alright, let's go! From School of Rock to the world's best roadie, Jack Black's extensive movie and TV careers are nearly matched by his musical accomplishments. In the early 90s, Jack teamed up with Kyle Gass to form Tenacious D, a comedy hard rock band that went on to release three studio albums. And we played the first thing that came to our heads just so happened to be the best song in the world. It was the best song in the world. Their sophomore record, The Pick of Destiny, served as a soundtrack for the duo's musical comedy movie with the same name, which was unfortunately a notorious box office flop. As part of Tenacious D, Jack won a Grammy for the band's cover of Dio's The Last in Line. Number 6. Maya Rudolph Then you must not know about me, you must not know about me. <laughs> Before Saturday Night Live and Bridesmaids, there was Matt Sharp's The Rentals. Mostly known for her comedy stylings and NBC's long-running sketch show, Maya's background is peppered with cool musical appearances. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> In support of the Rentals' debut album, Maya served as backing vocalist and keyboardist during their initial tour and even recorded vocals for two songs on their follow-up record, Seven More Minutes. Once established within the industry, occasionally Maya still lent her vocal talent to record a song or two. When not tickling America's funny bone, the actress tours with Princess, a Prince cover band. Number 5. Fred Armisen it's starting to seem like comedians and musicians go hand in hand. I think you and I seem like we're the same type of mu musically trained judges of how people sing. The comedic sidekick and leader of the HG band on Late Night with Seth Meyers, Fred Armisen knows his way around a drum set. After moving from New York to Chicago, Fred joined Trenchmouth, a 90s post-hardcore band, as their drummer, and went on to record four full-length records. 
Music also played a crucial role in launching Fred's TV career, as he often served as an interviewer on HBO's Reverb, a series that spotlighted up-and-coming musical talent. I think if we took a film of my experience as a drummer, it would not be on stage, it would be this business, and then... <laughs> Number 4. Jason Schwartzman This funny man is more than just a constant presence throughout Wes Anderson's filmography. Do you want to smoke a cigarette with me in the bathroom? The Bored to Death star spent nearly a decade as the drummer for pop rock outfit Phantom Planet, before leaving to work on his acting career. This change in focus did not suddenly mean that music was no longer important to Jason. In 2006, he went down the indie singer-songwriter route with the creation of Coconut Records. You are my voice. You are my voice. Once in a while, his two passions even crossed streams, like the time he was cast in Judd Apatow's Funny People, which featured two Coconut Records songs on its soundtrack. Number 3. Scarlett Johansson Just when we thought Black Widow couldn't get any cooler, she goes and records an album of Tom Waits songs with a guest appearance from David Bowie. Her solitary solo album, 2008's Anywhere I Lay My Head, received a lukewarm reception upon release, although Enemy selected it as their 23rd best album of the year. Falling down, falling down. Since then, the blonde bombshell collaborated with Pete Yorn for an album, formed an all-girl band called The Singles, received a cease and desist from another band with the same name, and added her vocals to an Academy-nominated track by Jay Ralph. Honestly, where does she find the time? Oh. <laughs> How do you get different sounds out of this? Number two, Adam Scott. Bow, bow. Is Scott a U2 fan? No, he is a U2 super fan. Parks and Recreation's Ben Wyatt is slowly becoming one of Hollywood's go-to comedians, and if they ever decide to do a biopic on Bono, they know who to call. When Adam is not being a dick to Kristen Bell on The Good Place, the California-born comedian occasionally records a podcast for Earwolf entitled You Talkin' U2 To Me? During the episodes, Adam Scott and Comedy Bang Bang's Scott Ackerman discuss the Irish band's discography and how their music impacted their lives often using it as a means to unleash some hilarious life lessons. You can just send me the payment for them whenever you get the chance. Bono? Wait, payment? He really? wants us to pay for the t-shirts? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Elijah Wood An accomplished actor, gamer, producer, and DJ, this Lord of the Rings star might just be cooler off-screen than on it. Building on the recognition earned via Peter Jackson's trilogy, Elijah established his own record label, Simeon Records, with Robert Schneider's The Apple and Stereo being the first band he signed. As his film and TV career continued to flourish, Elijah also found time to form Wood & Wisdom, a DJ team with his friend Zach Cowie, and dedicated years touring in support of the project. To save you a Google search, no, his stage name is not DJ Frodo. We are also disappointed. People like, would be insane to go to a party with DJ Frodo. <laughs> like, what kind of party are you going? Thank you. What level of drugs do you have to take to think DJ Frodo is the party you want to be Probably at? Probably mushrooms. So wait, what is... <laughs> yeah, mushrooms. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.